I had my own uh, wake-up moment uh, in 2007 when I collapsed from sleep deprivation, broke my cheekbone on the way down, and that was the moment when I began to study the importance of sleep in our lives and the dangers of not sleeping. I'm identifying a lot of new role models like you, like Hans Ulrich, like Miriam, like the um, CEO of um, Microsoft, Satya Nadella, who says, I sleep for eight hours, and if I don't, I'm not as good a CEO. Now, a CEO would not have admitted that. Even two years ago, even if they slept eight hours, they would never admit it. It's one of the, the parts of developing our society into something that you could call like neurocapitalism, where the brain and, and the human being is more or less a resource that can be exhausted and, and used up to levels of productivity that need to be enhanced and enhanced and enhanced. And as we heard, we are in the, the age of self-enhancement, so um, making sleep more productive is also up to us. And a lot of people think they need to sleep shorter to be productive. And whatever we know from, from sleep research tells us uh, the other way around. So I think we need to look closely into that. And I, I, I keep up a quote of, of Arthur Schopenhauer, the, the um, ancient German philosopher, who said, Sleep is the real core of life, so we're not just resting a little bit, but we are going back to something which is basically human, um, and we need it to be um, the, the human kind we need to be during the day. I was been very interested in, in sleep experiments, and uh, initially it was actually a crisis, because I kind of tried to experiment. First of all, as a teenager, I came across Balzac, uh, and I was very, very impressed by his productivity of books, so I thought, I should copy that, and he drank 50 coffees every day. So that didn't really work out. I then came across, uh, a few months later, after abandoning that, the Leonardo da Vinci rhythm. Steffi said, you have to meet my sleep guru, Till. And so she took me over at the DLD dinner, uh, and it was fascinating because a kind of an argument broke loose because I had all kinds of opinions on sleep, and Till said, it's all wrong. It's all wrong because there is something like an internal clock. We sleep researchers have to go down and make our really basic homework and answer the basic questions. And then we can decide whether we can shorten this feature, this very important feature in our lives or not. I have the suspicion that once we really know what sleep does, we will not vote to shorten it. And then this amazing thing happened. Um, at this uh, assistant in the office who would always come six, seven hours late to work. I mean, we start at nine in the morning, so we, he would arrive maybe at 4 p.m. Um, and <laughs> obviously caused the problem, and you know, in my office this is a real problem, what are we gonna do? However, you know, he did extraordinary work, so I thought we need to kind of find a solution. So he explained to me that his inner rhythm, or his inner time, you know, quote your book, is really that he has to sleep during the day and he can only work at night. So all of a sudden I walked in London and I thought, wow, this is the solution, because basically he could be my personal night assistant. In my case, I feel I really love and enjoy my life. And when I'm sleep deprived, I don't really like myself. I become more reactive. I uh, don't enjoy what I'm doing. And it's not worth it. So if you think of this, um, and this is just the beginning of, of using neuroscience um, to, to improve our uh, capacity of the brain and to, to get rid of the restrictions, that's my story where I would say, I really think um, we need to be careful about that. 